disclaimer, all available content in this awareness session is for positive lifestyle management purposes. Positive lifestyle management does not advocate or support gang banging, drug selling or usage, violence or any negative actions, behavior or attitude against men, women or children. Our platform is for the uplifting of fallen humanity. Greetings, 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 brothers and sisters, men and women all around the world. Welcome to another episode of PLM News. I'm your brother, Fiji, and today we are clearing the smoke. Yeah, I know it's been a while and uh, I haven't been here, you, and uh, but I've been working on something real special, real special, been doing some, been doing some research and working. And the one thing that PLM News do. We stand on truth and we stand on facts. We're not going to defame or slander anyone. We're going to be fair and balanced in our reporting. We will not be biased. If the evidence is there, we're going to present the evidence for how it is. And that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing that I would like, like for us to do is this here. I want all of you to know that PLM News truly, truly appreciate you. We do, we do. And everything that we do is for the peoples. We do it for the people. It's not for self-gratification it's for the peoples it's to keep the in peoples informed you know because without the people plm news is nothing it's nothing without you you all make plm news network what it is we are true to what we stand on we stand on truth and we stand on facts now i want to give a big shout out a great big shout out to our many brothers and sisters in the great state of indiana you know and to the brother jay hustle that's in indianapolis man that's my man's man me and jj we we come up we come up together you know, we come up through the system as kids together. So, you know, to the great state of Indiana, man, we give a give a big shout out. Now, let's get down to business. The first thing I want to do is this here. <clears throat> We're going to discuss slander. And that's what we have been. Uh, that's been going on for a while. PLM News Network is not about slander. We would not slander anybody. If the evidence is there, regardless if it's in a person's favor or it's not in their favor, we're going to report the news how it is. We're not going to add to it. We're not going to take away from it. Recently, I received some information about a case that I should look at. So I went and took a look at the case and the docket number that they gave me to look at, the entry number. I went to Pacer and I looked at it. Prior to me going to the case to look it up, it was told to me that it was a 58-page document that it was full of rats, a person, a person cooperating. So I said, okay, I'm going to go take a look. When I get to the document, it's six pages. No cooperation, nowhere. So I get back with the brother. I say, listen, man, brother, P 
PLM News don't deal in slander, man. We're not slandering anyone's name. We're not going to do it. Because when we start slandering one person's name, then what happens is PLM News loses its credibility. We would not lose our credibility based on a click or a view. If it's there, we're going to report it how it is. Now, let's get an understanding on what slander is. We're going to take a look at slander. This is what slander says. Slander. The legal law definition of slander is the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. The verb of it is making false and damaging statements about someone. Our people's view slander the same equivalence as making an ignorant outburst. And what is an ignorant outburst? An ignorant outburst is it means a person having little knowledge or education and experience in a particular area, subject, or matter. That's what an ignorant outburst is. Let me explain it to you again. It means a person having little knowledge or education and experience in a particular area, subject, or matter. Now, with that being said and with that being understood, we have to be very careful with the information that we deliver to peoples and the information that we receive. Because we can slander somebody knowingly and unknowingly. So we have to be aware of the person that's giving us this information. Which brings us to our person of today. Mr. Johnny Crusher Jackson. He has a sealed document. He has many sealed documents. A lot of those sealed documents, the majority of those sealed documents, came before he was incarcerated while he was still on the run. Many of you know the case that he's on. He's on a high profile case. Case. He was on the run for five years. So the whole time that he was on the run from 1995 to 2000, he was on the run for five years. Docket entries were being made in his in that case concerning him. But by him being on the run, these documents were sealed. These interests were sealed. So they wasn't available for the public to see because these was interests that it was basically it was trying to catch up with him. I discussed what a sealed document is. And at the end of this video, I'm going to put that link up so that you all can go look at that video because I broke it down in very detail on what a sealed document is. So I'm not going to discuss that here, but I'm going to discuss this here. Is Mr. Johnny Crusher Jackson hiding something? PLM News. We stand on truth and we stand on facts. We would not play favoritism with nobody. I've always told the audience that PLM News don't care who you are. 
right is right and wrong is wrong. If you right, we're going to say what you are. If you wrong, we're going to say what you are, that you're wrong. We're going to follow the evidence. So let's get down to business. We're going to start with this docket entry because this is the docket entry that has become of great, uh, 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 the great debate. This is the docket entry that everybody is going around, showing all around the country, putting it in their phones and saying this sealed document, this sealed, this sealed, this docket entry. What is this sealed docket entry, right? But we're going to start from 11, 10, 20, 20. And we start, says, docket, document entry 1303. It says, motion by Johnny Jackson for a termination of probation, motion for early termination of supervised release. That was a motion by his lawyer, Miss Andrea Gambino. On 11-12-2020, docket entry 13-04, many entry before the Honorable Harry D. Lubin Weber, the government shall file this objection, if any, to defendants Jackson motion for termination of probation. 13-03, by 11-30-2020, pretrial services shall file its recommendation by 11-30-2020. Remember what I said now. Pre-trial services, pre-trial services shall file its recommendation. So, 11.25, when you see the highlight at 13.05, it says special report, supervision as to Johnny Jackson sealed by Crystal Mosley. So, I said, okay special report special what is a special report so what plm news did we followed the evidence we we're going to track the evidence we went and found a case exactly like mr jackson and here's the case that we went and found it's from mark johnson now mark johnson filed a motion to termin to terminate supervised release. His lawyer by Kevin Boger, right? So if we go over to here, still this motion dealing with supervised release. S Docket entry 97, 513-2019. It says special report, supervision as to mark Johnson sealed special report supervision as to Mark Johnson sealed. All right, let's get this clear. PLM news are in no way whatsoever saying that Mr. Mark Johnson is hiding some whatsoever. We're only using this case because it's mirrors Mr. Jackson case it has nothing to do with i want to make this absolutely clear please look at me and quote me on this here plm news is not in any way slandering or saying mr mark johnson is hiding anything we're not saying that we're only using it as an example because your case, Mr. Johnson, whoever you are, your case mirrors Mr. Jackson's case. Y'all case mirror each other with the same docket entry. Supervision. It's a special report. Supervision. As to Mr. Mark Johnson and as to Mr. Johnny Jackson. Now, let's get back to Mr. Jackson. You know. Now, in this report, right after that, on 1130, the government filed its response towards uh, Mr. Jackson's motion for early termination. The government filed their response. So, 
I said, okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I said, man, this sealed is causing a lot of problems. Got to find out what's going on with this seal. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly going, you constantly going. Boom, we get over to 324, 2021. It says special report 12A, no court action, violation as to Mr. Johnny Jackson, sealed. Violation. Violation. So they filed a violation on him. They did a special report and they did a violation. And this is the reason why they done the violation. Watch this here. Right up under there, on 427 2021, at docket entry 1315, it says, Motion by the United States of America for a protective order as to Johnny Jackson. Agreed. So most people would think that a protective order is an order like it's protecting him from somebody or protecting something like a protected custody. That's what the first thing a person would think. So this is what happened. Boom. We go to the protective order. Motion for entry of agreed protective order governing discovery. So what is this protective order? Now, I'm, I'm taking us through this here. We got to go step by step because we don't want to lose no step. I'm going to read this here. It says, pursuant to federal rule and criminal procedure 16D, the United States of America by John R. Luch Jr., United States Attorney for the Northern District of Illinois, moves for the entry of an agreed protective order and in support thereof states as follows. In May, number one, May 2000, following a jury trial, Jackson was convicted of conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute and distribute cocaine, cocaine base, <clears throat> excuse me, heroin and marijuana. Count one. Distribution of a controlled substance, count 14, and 15 separate counts of using a communication facility in furtherance of the drug conspiracy charge in count one, docket entry 685. So if y'all got pacer, go look at docket entry 685. In December of 2000, the court subsequently imposed consecutive sentences of 20 years imprisonment on counts one, 20 years imprisonment on count 14, and four years imprisonment on each of the 15 phone counts, all consecutive. So we know 15 times four, that's 60. Then you got uh, 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 the 20 for count one, that's 80. And the 20 for count 14, that's 100. That's how Mr. Jackson wind up with 100 years. In November of 2019, the court granted Jackson's motion for relief under the First Step Act and ordered his sentence to run concurrently rather than consecutively. So he had already been locked up 20 years almost. So his sentence was to run concurrent. So, by him being locked up 19 years, over 19 years, almost 20 years, they ran a concurrent and he was released. On or about November 13, 2019, Jackson was released from custody and served and started his five year term of supervised release. All right. Now we go over to page two. This is where it's going to get very important that we got to pay attention. Number five, as documented in the report filed by the United States Probation Officer Office on or about October, I mean, uh, about March 24th, 2021. Pay attention to what I'm going to say. Between July of 2020 and December. 2020, 
Jackson participated in several phone calls with BOP inmates. Ho, 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 ho. Let's go back. We're going to read this again. As documented in the report filed by the United States Probation Office on or about March 24th, 2021, between July 2020 and December 2020, Jackson participated in several phone calls with BOP inmates. Ho, ho, ho. Let's get back over here. We got to get back over here because it says this docket entry, this special report was made in November of 2020. So that means that's during that time period where Mr. Jackson was allegedly speaking to inmates in the BOP prison. Because it says from July 2020 to December of 2020, this when this was made. All right, the phone calls was made then. So now we paying attention now. Pay attention. 11 2020 It's going to get a whole lot more clearer for you. Boom. Six. It is the government's position that Jackson participation in those phone calls violated standard conditions number nine of his supervised release, which states the defendant shall not associate with any person engaged in criminal activity and shall not associate with any person convicted of a felony unless granted permission to do so by the probation officer. Now, that's part of his judgment and commitment. That's in every last federal judgment and commitment in the United States of America. Anybody who has been to the Federal Bureau of Prison knows that you are not, according to their, their, uh, 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 um, their supervised release standard conditions, that's what they put in there. Okay, so now let's get back. On or about April the 23rd, 2021, Jackson Council requested production of the telephone calls between Jackson and BOP inmates that was referenced in the probation officer's report. The discovery that Jackson has requested, now this is the government saying this here now, this is in number eight. The discovery that Jackson has requested from the government includes sensitive information whose unrestricted dissemination could adversely affect law enforcement interests and the privacy interests of third parties. Listen to me, man. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, peoples. The government said the discovery that Jackson has requested from the government includes sensitive information whose unrestricted dissemination could adversely affect law enforcement interests and the privacy interests of third parties. So they was keeping this away from him for law enforcement interests and third parties interests. Who are the third parties? So they not, he's not hiding anything. The government doesn't want him to know about law enforcement, what they got going on or anybody else that's involved in this here. Now, here is the thing with that. I told brothers this here. I told peoples this. I told them. I specifically explained this to them. 
but wands cannot continue with the slander. So this is what the government did with his attorney. Number nine, he said the government has discussed the proposed protective order with counsel for a defendant who agrees to the entries of the proposed order. Meaning, the proposed order was that whatever they were shown, this not to be used again. It cannot be his lawyer seen it. So they agreed to it. It was because the brother was speaking to peoples in the Bureau of Prisons. How can you fault somebody who has just left men that has he had been with for 20 years? Are you going to turn your back on somebody that you have been locked up with? Are you going to do it? You do you know that we have to always be mindful of our peoples within the community. We must not forget the peoples in the community because you may yourself may wind up in that type of adverse situation. And do you want someone to reach out to you? But here is the issue that's most important. This issue right here, slander, slander, making spoken statements damaging to a person's reputation. Why do we insist on damaging people's reputation when we do not do the proper research? We have to be mindful of the things that we say. Be careful of the fruit that you are eating from this tree. Pay attention to the tree that you're getting this fruit off of. It's the tree rotten on the inside. So if the tree is rotten on the inside, the fruit that you receive from this tree is also going to be rotten. Let me say that again. If you are receiving fruit from a tree, that the tree is rotten, the tree is dead. There's no life in this tree. And you are eating the fruits from this tree. The fruits that you are eating is not good. It's not good. So you got to be careful on the fruit that you're receiving. Pay attention to the tree. Like the prophet Noble Drew Ali said, I mean, I brought you everything it takes to save a nation. Now take it and save yourself. I'm going to constantly, PLM News is going to constantly bring you the truth. We're going to constantly bring you the truth. We're going to give you the facts. We're going to give you the documents that you need to go find the truth yourself. All it takes is a little research. It takes time to sit down to follow the evidence. Follow the evidence. And then we got to think. Don't forget about the sit downs with the Vicks, with the Jimmy D's. Don't forget about them sit downs. Don't, for, don't forget about the Willers. Don't forget about all these very people that's doing the slandering of the very people that was hanging around these type of individuals. PLM News is not going to slander nobody name. PLM News is going to keep it fair and balanced. 
I'm not going to allow nobody to come to me and give out no unbalanced, unfair information. If it's not factual, PLM News has a journalistic right and responsibility to report the news fair and balanced to the people. And on that note, clearing the smoke. And I just hope for everybody out there that we have cleared the smoke for you. We cleared the smoke. PLM News has been telling us all the time, go get a PACER account and just follow it. It's going to open up. The doors are going to open for you. It's going to open for you. That way you ain't got to be listening to what somebody else is telling you. You can go do your own factual research. You ain't got to listen to nothing I just said to you. I showed y'all. I showed you. And I'm going to continue to show you. Because if the evidence is there, that's what we're going to follow. And on that note, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.